how are you all doing? Today is Friday, December 30th, and I am back for a floss tube video. Today's video will not be my usual update video. Instead, it will be a year in review. And so what that means is I'm going to talk about the finishes that I had in 22, uh, the whips that I carried over into 22, the ones that I am taking with me into 2023, new year, new start, and plans for the coming year really excited to make today's video. I hope that you guys will enjoy it. Uh, as far as my regular floss tube update videos, what I have decided to do is film it next week. So you will have basically back-to-back -back videos from me. And I hope that you will come back by in a week and check out what I have been up to, which will have been over three weeks at that point. Because today's video is going to be a year in review video, I'm not going to do a giveaway. I'm also not going to announce a giveaway winner from my previous video. Um, originally, I was going to kind of put everything into one video and I just decided it would be way too long. And I really did just kind of want this video to be kind of a standalone bookmark, something that I could come back and reference at the end of next year to see, to compare and see. So if you have not entered uh, the last giveaway from my last video, and if you haven't even watched the last video, I would love for you to go back and check it out. And then in my next video, which will be in one week, I will announce the winners and talk about all my usual stuff. The other thing that I will not be showing in today's video are the quilts. Originally, I was going to because I did have some quilt finishes over 22 but I didn't write any of it down. I, for whatever reason, I did not keep good records of those. So I need to go back in and kind of figure all that out. So in my next video, I will insert and talk about those um, in the normal quilting segment of the video. So that part, of that, that part of my next video might be a little bit longer. Hope I'm not confusing you guys. I feel like I've just got to get a bunch out right at the beginning. Um, again, I hope you guys will stick around and see what I have been up to over this past year. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Starting off, a tool that I use to keep track of all of my projects this past year has been the Needleworkers Book of Days by Needlework Press. Uh, this has been an invaluable tool for me. And as long as I was really diligent about writing down the information about everything that I worked on, it was really easy to find the information. There was a couple of things that I didn't write down, counts or linen, I just sort of scribbled something down. And I realized that when I'm adding stuff into my book of days, I need to not do it in such a frenzy. I need to take a little bit of time <laughs> to make sure I can read my own handwriting. But this has been an invaluable tool for me to help keep track of everything, even when my videos fall, what day they do, and the number. It's just been really a great, great tool. January 1st of 2022, my New Year New Start was Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. Originally, that was not supposed to be the new start for the new year. Instead, it was supposed to be Sarah Stewart Hardman, and I think prior to November, I had shown and talked about her a little bit. But then after my sister-in-law passed away in November of 2021, Yvette and I decided to bump Christmas Garden and start it January 1st. Um, that way I would be able to stitch something in memory of my sister-in-law who really loved Christmas. The projects that I carried over from 2021 into 2022 were Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow, American Farmhouse, Celtic Autumn, the Janet Granger Conversion, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain, and Coming to America. Of the six that I just mentioned, I finished three. Two I'm carrying over into the new year of 23, and one was bumped. The one that was bumped was Celtic Autumn. The reason why was a linen issue. So the original linen that I had kitted up was a 28 count doubloon, 
And after working on my Mayflower piece, I realized that I was going to run into the same problem where there was going to be a lot of thread blending because I am doing the Janet Granger conversion. And I will insert a picture of what that conversion looks like here. So it's very much very autumn-y, those beautiful, beautiful autumn colors that I love. And the linen, the 28 count doubloon, looked very orange. So I decided to remove her from the mocking basket of whips. And she has been partially de-kitted. And at some point I will find a new linen to add to the kit and I will be able to start her. I have some ideas on what that linen will be and maybe at some point this year I will be able to purchase it and then look forward to a start on her down the line. The three projects that I finished were Autumn and Hawk Run Hollow, which um, I will insert a picture of if I have it, of what it looked like prior. I did do a bunch of deleting of some of my pictures, so I'm not sure that I'm going to have it. But basically, I just had the first two blocks completed. Um, Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow, which you saw a little bit earlier on this year, and watched my progress as 2022 went along. And American Farmhouse, which I was able to finish a little bit earlier this year. So not too shabby, Mocking Basket of Whips only has two remaining, um, and I will talk about them here in a second. Finishes of 2022. Now, I hope you guys didn't fall asleep during that first part. I wanted to start off the video doing like the stats of the year, how I, you know, how it started, what was going on, what was in the Mocking Basket, you know, what, I, what was my new year, new start. And to me, the easiest way for me to keep track of everything is to take you all the way back to January 1st and just start right from there. So I hope you guys did not mind. Um, the finishes for the year of 22 ended up being 29. Originally, I thought they were 28, and then I found one hiding in the book of days. So it was really good that I went in and was kind of doing that last minute check to make sure that I had all of the correct information. So... Um, all of the finish, I have some of the finishes here, uh, but there are some that I was not able to get to. Um, most of those are my autumn Halloween finishes that I did over this past year. I had meant while the Christmas decor, um, cause I, everything gets stored together, all of the seasonal decor does. And the Halloween is kind of in the back corner of where everything is stored. And when the Christmas stuff was down, I had meant to go in and pull these items out. And I just totally forgot. I should have wrote myself a note. I thought about it almost all the way up until the day I started taking down all of the decor. And then I just completely forgot. So what I've decided to do is go and pull those pictures off of Instagram and I will insert pictures of the finishes if I do not have them right now. Uh, if you have any questions about them, you know, please feel free to let me know. All of the information that I am going to be sharing about them will be listed down below in the description box. But as far as what the charts look like, um, what exact threads I used, I did not bring any of that information with me today. Some of these charts I still have, some I passed on, and I just felt like it would be easier if I just showed you the finish, talked about it a little bit, and if you have any questions about them, please let me know. Um, I did the best I could in making sure I have the correct information down about them. Again, if I was really good about putting all of that information in the book of days, then that is what I have to read from today. So all of these finishes are in chronological order. Um, a great tool that I use, not only my book of days, but also Instagram. And I'm so glad that I started keeping track of all of the information in two different places because sometimes some of the information was on Instagram and not in the book of days, and then it was opposite. So I'm glad that I had two great tools to help me keep track of everything this past year. Uh, the first finish of 22 was Merry Winter by Country Rustic Primitives. I stitched this on a piece of 32 count linen with the called for DMC. I started this January 3rd and finished it January 10th. 
and I have this one hanging down the hallway currently uh, because it's winter and I still continue to decorate for winter for the next couple of months. So I love it. Such a cute one. The next finish for January was Anne Priest by The Scarlet House. So I started this one on uh, November 12th of 2020. It was my birthday start that year. Uh, I worked on it sporadically for the rest of the year. And then in 21, I decided to pick it up and start working on it. And on January 11th of 22, I finished it. And I stitched this one in memory of my paternal great-grandparents, Mary Slaby and John Kerpika. Uh, I love this. This currently hangs in my bedroom. It's one of my favorite finishes of 22. Uh, the frame I did um, put together myself. So a lot of these pieces were frames that I, I made or my husband made and I put together. And this is one that we purchased the molding from Home Depot and he put it together. I stained it and put it all together. I love it. It's one of, it truly is one of my favorite finishes. So I finished this January 11th. The next one and one that I do not have with me is Mighty Acorn by Blackbird Designs. Uh, I started it in the fall of 21, carried it over into 22, and then finished it early 2022. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count Wren, and I based that by Picture This Plus, and I, that is what information I put on Instagram. And I did use the called for threads, and I stitched it one over two. Next is the 1823 EW Sampler by Country Rustic Primitives. So I stitched this on a piece of 32 count days gone by with the called for DMC. And I stitched this in memory of my sixth great grandmother, Mary Snyder, who was born kind of right around that time of 1823. And this currently hang or is on a shelf in my bedroom. And I love it. It was a lot of fun to stitch too. It stitched up really quick. So I started that on the 24th of January and I finished it on the 30th. So it was just a really great start and finish just right off the bat. I loved it. The last finish of January was this one. So this is the 1814 Valentine Cupboard Pin Keep by Country Rustic Primitives. I stitched it on a piece of 32 count linen from my stash and I did use the called for DMC and it currently hangs out in the trench bowl right about here. <laughs> so I know I need to stitch more Valentine, at least one Valentine small um, this year. I don't know that I will go completely hog wild, but I would like to at least try to do one a year. I think that would be great. All right, so the beginning of February, I started Samplings number one by With Thy Needle and Thread. I stitched it on a piece of 40 count Dusty Road Linen by Seraphim Fabrics. And I used, I believe, all of the called for except for the white is DMC 5200. And I did stitch it one over two. Uh, just like with the pin keep, I stuffed it with polyester fiber fill. And this two in uh, the end of February, beginning of March will go into the trench bowl. So it was a lot of fun. It's so dainty and sweet. I also have, uh, there's a blue one, um, and I would like to stitch that one this year. Um, I did not pull the eggs that you make to go with it. So when you buy the chart, there um, is a piece of fabric. It's like sampler fabric, and you cut, you trace and cut out two eggs, and you make it, and then you're, you just lay the three together. And I do have those made, but they are put away with my Easter decor. Uh, next up is Mary Bell. So this is the Mary Bell Sampler by Homespun Prims by Lori. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count corn silk by Weeks Dye Work and I used the called for DMC. I started this January 15th of 22 and I finished it March 18th of 22 and it currently hangs in my bedroom. And I love it. It's such a beautiful, fun little sampler. I think she's recently designed, I hesitate to call it a companion piece, but it's the same size. And when she was 
um, when Lori, um, Homespun Prims by Lori, when she was showing pictures during Christmas of her house, she had Mary Bell and then there was this other sampler that was hanging with it and it was really cute and I do hope to get that one this year and maybe work on it. So I love it. It's such a beautiful little sampler and I'm a sucker for a giant red house. Right, a tisket a tasket brings us into March. Uh, this is a tisket a tasket Easter pillow tuck by Primitive Stitchin on Etsy. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count Mellow by Picture This Plus, and I used the called for threads. I started this on March 14th and finished it on March 22nd. I love it, it's so pretty. So this one was one that I, it was very easy to get to. At first I didn't think I was going to, but I actually left this out and it was sitting on my table out in the dungeon. So I was glad that I did. <laughs> so, so cute. All right, so this next one I got from Instagram and on the post it says a finish. So I'm assuming that I must have had a little bit um, you know, when the clock changed over to 21, I must have had just a little bit of it left to stitch. It's not really documented, so I'm not really sure why I didn't, but it is called And To All Like A Night by Blackbird Design. So I stitched this on a piece of 36 count Aspen and I did use the called for threads and I stitched it one over two. And the frame was also, my husband cut it for me and I did all the, the distressing distressing on it. <laughs> uh, this is another one where the start date, I do not have it written down anywhere. It just appears in the book of days and I'm not sure why I didn't write any of the information down, but that is the Winter is Past by Blackbird Designs. So I stitched this on a piece of a 36 count oaken by Picture This Plus and I did use the called for threads and I finished it April 13th of 22. And this one currently hangs in my bedroom as well. I love it. This one was a lot of fun to work on. I loved the colors, just the blues and the greens. Even though it's a it's supposed to be a winter piece, to me it definitely says late winter, early spring, especially with those little bits of green that you see here and there. But it was a lot of fun. I love this one. I'm so glad that I stitched it last year, or this year. <laughs> love it. Uh, so this next one, I started March 29th and I finished it April 26th and that is Fractor Tulips by Tina Waltman. Uh, this was stitched on a piece of 36 count Mellow by Picture This Plus and I used the called for DMC. And this one also currently resides in my bedroom as well. I really love it. It's It was so much fun. It was just kind of like a quick stitch and I think the reason why I did it is because I needed like a little, you know, quick finish pick me up and uh, this was perfect. So I love it. And again, I think the frame, I purchased it from the Goodwill and I brought it home and I distressed it in colonial blue and it looks great. It's, it's perfect because this um, color right in here, I mean, it just like helps it pop right out. I love it. My next finish, which I will insert a picture of, was October 31st by Blackbird Designs. I stitched it on a piece of 32 count Winter Wren by Fox and Rabbit. And I did use my own over dyed thread conversion. I started it April 29th and I finished it May 13th. And if you are interested in that thread conversion, um, go ahead and send me an email. I, if I had to do the project over again, I don't think I would have used the linen that I did, but I had purchased the linen. When I got it, it was not what I was expecting, but I decided to experiment a little bit and see. Um, but if I, I mean, I do like the finish, but if I had to do it all over again, I think I would have chosen something that was not that color, but I do like it. <laughs> My next finish, which I will insert a picture of, is Halloween at Hawkburn Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I stitched it on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha, and I used the DMC conversion listed on the chart. I started it in uh, September, October 2017 and finished it May 17th of 22. I had completed the first two blocks of that particular series, decided to call it a day. I just was not in, 
I was not in love with it. I was not, I didn't want to continue on. So I decided to stop where I was and finish it into a drum and I absolutely love it. Did get a lot of people who gave me some pushback because they were disappointed that I had abandoned it. At some point I do see myself restitching it, but I think when I do, I want to make my own thread conversion. Um, I just was not really jibing with some of the thread, I think, and um, also some of the blocks I want to switch out for some other ones. So a lot of a lot of work with that one. And so I can see myself stitching it at some point, re restarting it. Uh, the next finish that I had was called Simple Harvest by Blackbird Design. So I borrowed this chart from a friend. I believe it is out of print. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count autumn fields uh, with Weeks Dye Works Onyx. I started it May 16th of 22 and I finished it May 23rd of 22. This was so much fun. I loved stitching this. And this one currently resides in my bedroom. The frame was one that I purchased from the Goodwill and I heavily distressed it. Uh, I believe it was painted white and I went in with black, really put it on thick, and then took a um, sanding block that I had and just went up and down so I could get those white streaks to pop in. And I love it. My next finish, which I will insert a picture of, was the Blue House Neighborhood by Cherry Hill Stitchery. I stitched on 32 count doubloon with picture this or by Picture This Plus with the called for threads. I started it uh, uh, June 14th, which was flag day, and I finished it June 26th. And then I finished it into a drum. It was so much fun stitching it. I did it as a stitch along. So many of you guys joined in, which was so fantastic. I don't typically host sals because I'm horrible at them, not only participating, but just in general with them. And I was so happy that so many of you guys joined me. It just, it meant so much to me and it was so much fun. All right, so my next finish was Christmas Garden by Blackbird Design. So this one was my January New Year New Start in 2022. And I stitched this one with my good friend Yvette. I also stitched the sampler in honor of my sister-in-law who had passed away in the uh, prior November. So getting this one done was a labor of love for sure. I know I just showed this one not too long ago in my regular floss too when I was showing my Christmas finishes, but it was my new year new start so I have to show it again. So I stitched this on a piece of 36 count dusty road linen by Seraphim Fabrics. And I used the Vicki Clayton silks conversion that Vicki Clayton has in her shop. And I started this January 1st of 22 and I finished it June 30th of 22. So six months. And I sometimes miss working on this one. I had a lot of fun. I really loved the colors. It definitely gives me that old world Victorian vibe that I just really love. And I love how the colors all play together. And I, I just, I love having this one in the house. And I see it every day because it's hanging up down the hall currently. But a lot of fun. Good memories with this one. All right, <clears throat> my next finish was one that I had a lot of fun working on and a lot of fun finishing, and that is Sir Walter. So it is the middle motif from the Anne Thomas sampler by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I stitched it on a piece of 40 Count Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics with DMC, and I started it March 25th, and I finished it July 11th. And the frame I had picked up in the fall, uh, so it would have been in the fall of 21, I picked it up from a garage sale. And I came around a corner, saw it, had to have it. And I knew right away the one that I, um, the, mo the bird motif that I wanted to put in it. I, I had seen Kim Goldman, which she just recently changed her um, YouTube name. Um, 
I cannot, is it the contented? No. I'll have to scroll it. Um, I can't remember what she renamed her channel to, but um, she had done one where she had just done that middle motif of the Ann Thomas sampler, and I loved it, and I could see it in my mind, but I kept going back and forth. There was a couple other bird motifs, and you know, I would find one, and I would think, I, yeah, I like that one, but then I would immediately come back to this one, and I just, I knew I had to do this one. So uh, someday I would love to stitch the whole sampler. It's beautiful. But I love having this little portion of him. So uh, currently this resides in my bedroom on my dresser. And I absolutely love it. Probably It's right up there with one of my favorite finishes of all time. I love it. A lot of fun. Okay, so my next finish I will insert a picture of. And that was Boo Crew by the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I started it on July 5th and finished it on July 30th of 22. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count Shrekies Tan by Needle Bling Designs, and I did use the called for threads. I believe they were Classic Color Works. And once I had it done, I finished it into a drum. Uh, next finish is American Farmhouse by The Scarlet House. So this was one of the ones in the Mocking Basket of Whips that I had carried over into 22. I started this one in the summer of 2019 and it, it hung out a lot in the Mocking Basket of Whips in Time Out. Cannot figure out why. Um, all I remember is having a lot of trouble. Um, I was kind, I, I was, I had been doing cross stitch for a little while at that time, but I had never done anything on a dark piece of linen on a piece of 36 count. And I think that was probably what a lot of my problem was. But then in the time in between the summer of 2019 and then now, I stitch on that stuff all the time. So when I picked it up again, I was expecting to have issues. I was expecting to have a lot of thread rip out and instead it went easy peasy. So I was able to finish it. So started it summer 2019, finished it August 20th. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count ale by Picture This Plus with the called for threads, one over two. And I love this. This currently also hangs in my bedroom as well. The frame came from the Goodwill and I uh, painted it black and uh, did a little distressing to it to give it that rusty crusty look I love. So a lot of fun. I'm glad that I picked it back up again, even though I didn't want to, but Yvette told me to do it. She's like, pick it back up and finish it. And so I did. <laughs> so thanks, Yvette. <laughs> uh, next is Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by With Thy Needle and Thread. I'm hoping I wrote that down correctly. I spent the entire time I was working on it saying the name wrong. Uh, I think I was saying thankful, grateful, blessed, and it's grateful, thankful, blessed. <laughs> so I stitched this on a piece of a 36 count legacy by Picture This Plus with various threads. I started it May 13th of 22 and I finished it August 3rd of 22. I'm glad I I'm glad I stitched this one. It was one of the ones that I kept seeing uh, everywhere, all over Instagram, Facebook, Floss Tube, and every time I saw it, I really just wanted to stitch it. It's such a beautiful sampler. The only thing I'm not super happy about is the outside border. I really do wish I would have went in, ripped it out, and restarted it in something dark. In the um, viewfinder, I can't, I can kind of see it, not very good. When it's hanging up, which it is currently hanging up down the hallway, um, I can see the wording, but you have to be standing right in front of it. And I, I, that is one of the, that's one of the things I wish I would have done differently. And a lesson that every time I look at it, it will be a reminder to, hey, if it's blending in, maybe rip her out. So it's a good lesson. <laughs> All right, next up is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. So this one I started in the summer 2017 and it hung out in the mocking basket of whips pretty much um, pretty much uh, fall 2017. I think I might have picked it up and worked on it very briefly 2018, but then 
pretty much it had spent a lot of time in the mocking basket of whips and I decided, I believe it was the end of 21 to pick this back up and start working on it until it was done. So started this summer of 2017 and finished it September 19th of 2020. I stitched it on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha and I used DMC threads. Uh, one change I made is there is another set of blocks that go right here. Um, they are the Halloween ones and I opted to take them out so that that way my piece was more autumn -y. It was also a good thing that I did because where it hangs in the fall, it would not have been able to hang there. It would have been too big. So I'm glad that I did remove those two blocks. And if I ever do choose to stitch Hallow or Halloween at Hawkgren Hollow, those two blocks that were from this one will go into it. So I love it. And this one currently hangs down the hallway as well. Of course, after I get my, I have a couple closets that I'm gonna be emptying stuff out and I'm hoping to be able to put my cross stitch pieces in there and be able to store them. So for now it hangs, but as soon as I get that done, it will go into the closet until next autumn. My next finish is this one. So this is called A Little Bit French Pin Roll by Blackbird Designs. I believe it came out of the book, out of the book, Ooh La La. I stitched it on a piece of 36 Count Heritage by Picture This Plus, and I used Weeks Dye Works Baked Apple. And I started it September 7th, and I finished it September 28th. And this was the project I took with me to Canada, but I ended up getting sick, so I did not work on it like I had wanted to. So it went with me to Canada. <laughs> My next one was Midnight Watch by Blackbird Designs. Uh, so I stitched this on 40 Count Patriots Brew by r and with various threads. I started it September 8th of 22, and I finished it October 7th and I had a blast stitching this one. It was another one that I had seen all over social media, floss tube. Every time I saw it, I wanted to stitch it. I do have the quilt um, that goes along with this particular piece, um, and it's in my someday to make list, but I knew I wanted to, I wanted this one on my wall too, and I'm glad that I now have it. It too hangs down the hallway. <laughs> I just can't put these away. <laughs> so I love this one. It was a lot of fun. Once again, um, the frame, all of these frames were either moldings that I purchased or they were frames that were purchased and cut down and refurbished for these finishes. So this was one that was uh, cut down from another frame. I love it. The next two I will be inserting pictures of. The first one is Old Tom Turkey by Tina Waltman. I stitched it on a piece of 28 count mystery linen with DMC. I started it on October 2nd of 22 and I finished it October 11th. The frame that I put him in is one that I found at the thrift shop. And when I got him done, I knew he would be perfect for it. And it was just like a match made in heaven. And even though it's it's a small finish, it's just, it's it ranks up there with some of the favorite ones. Sometimes those simple finishes are the best. <laughs> the next one is Pumpkins and Bittersweet by The Scarlet House. I stitched this on a piece of 40 count Dusty Road by Seraphim with various threads. I started it on October 17th, and for whatever reason, I did not write down the finish date, but I believe I finished it either towards the end of October or the first part of November. I made it into a little pillow for the trench bowl, and I believe it is stuffed with uh, walnut shells and polyester fiber fill, but if I had to do it all over again, I think I would just completely stuff it with sawdust or something like that. Um, I think it would have looked a lot, it would have, I feel like it would have looked a little bit more of what I was going for, but I also kind of wanted it to look like a, like a bed pillow because where it goes in the trench bowl, it didn't have a whole lot of room. So it, it, there was a couple of things that needed to happen with the finishing of that one.
My next finish was Christmas Joy by Homespun Prims by Lori. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count Legacy by Picture This Plus. I did use the called for DMC and I started this on November 2nd of 2022 and finished it November 23rd of 22. And this is one that I will be framing at some point this year. Just did not have a good size frame for this one and it's and I didn't have anything that would work so it's definitely something that I will be looking for uh, this next year. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to frame. I need to do um, for some finishes and then I need to do refinish refinishes on some other ones that I had previously finished. And then we had Harvest I Grow also by Homespun Prims by Lori. I stitched it on a piece of 36 count antique cotton by R&R with various threads and I started stitching it it looks like October 8th and I did finish it I believe late November. Uh, it might have been right after Thanksgiving but this was another one that I did not write the information down. I did do a little substitution and down below the basket I added our last name in the year Brian and I got married. But this one was a lot of fun. I loved working on this piece. I loved all the color. I mean, this has all of my favorite autumn colors in it. I just loved it. Loved working on it. So this is one that I also plan on getting framed at some point this year. So that way I can enjoy it in the fall. There was one finish uh, that I mentioned at the beginning that I discovered when I was flipping through my book of days. And I will hopefully insert a picture of it. I hope I still kept them. But that is Halloween Menagerie, and I think it was by Threadwork Primitives. I stitched it on a piece of 32 count Old Mill Java with the called for threads, and I started it August 30th, and I finished it at some point in September. Uh, it was for a um, Spooky Smalls exchange that I did with some other floss tubers, and I made mine, I made the, um, the drum, for Helen D and it was a lot of fun and I'm hoping to make one for myself this year and I again I hope I'm able to find a picture of it my last finish for 2022 and thank you so much for sticking with me is the or one of the Prairie Schooler Santas uh, I think it's St. Nicholas 2 maybe um, I might have to do some scrolling I put the booklet away and I can't find it um, but I started it November 28th and I finished it December 1st and originally I was going to make it into an ornament but then for whatever reason which it's a mystery um, it was so the, uh, the the Santa was laying next to this little wood cutting board that I had got from Hobby Lobby several years ago and I don't understand how he got from the magnet board, which is where he was at, to the uh, my work table um, and right next to this board. It's obviously ghosts, house ghosts. Um, I wish they would dust. But uh, so I thought, you know what? That's perfect. It's the right size, the right everything. So I went and fully finished it, mounted it onto the little cutting board, and it was perfect. I loved it. Um, I can use it as an ornament if I want to. It's not that heavy, but uh, I didn't hang it this year. It was actually across the room on the shelf. And I finished it by attaching this little piece of jute and these rusty bells. And I did not write down what I stitched it on. Oh, yes, I did. Sorry. Uh, so I did stitch it uh, two over two with DMC. I love it. So yeah, that was the last finish uh, for 2022. Not too bad for 29 finishes. Again, I was completely shocked when I did the final count. Um, I thought I had a lot less than that, but I definitely was way more productive than I thought, which was awesome. <laughs> so now with all the finishes done, the next thing to talk about is the mocking basket of whips. There are two outstanding whips that remain. The first one is Coming to America, Women of the Mayflower. <laughs> I started this one in September, I think it was like September 6th-ish, around there. 
of 2020, and it still remains undone <sighs> and mocks me. <laughs> So I stitched this on a piece of 36 count linen that I believe is by X Jude or X J Jude. I'm not really sure how to say that designs. And I'm using the called for threads one over two. And I have made it to the names. And my husband's ancestor is on here. So I definitely need to keep on going. And my plan with this one is just to kind of pick it up here and there whenever I need a project or a morning stitch and work on it because I know eventually I will get to a point where I look at it and it's like it's time so until that happens I will just pick it up every once in a while you'll kind of see it off and on during 23 and that's okay eventually it will get done <laughs> and the second outstanding a project in Ye Old Mocking Basket is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barracks. And this is one that I would like to try to get done this year, but if it doesn't happen, it's fine. <laughs> but I'm gonna try. So it's actually currently uh, written down as one of my um, January rotation projects. So this is where I ended. Uh, I don't think I've worked on this for s quite a few months. It's been probably three or four months since I've worked on this. Originally, I was trying to rotate it with Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow, but it was just too much. Um, so I set it aside. And now that Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow is done, and now that I, because I, when I finished it, I felt like I was kind of burnt out a little bit. So that was another reason why that this one didn't come out again. But now that it's done, it's been several months since I finished it, I'm ready. So I'm looking forward to getting back to this one. I think it's in the second week of January when I start working on it again. So I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha with overdyed threads. And I'm stitching it one over two. I love it. But I do know when those two eventually get done, I want no more outstanding whips. Everything I work on, I work on until I finish. That's the rules. <laughs> okay, so my favorite part of this whole video is the new year, new start reveal. I have been looking forward to working on this one for a really long time. Once again, it was not the original one that we were gonna do, but we felt like there was just too many big projects in our rotation. So this one got bumped up to January 1st. And I'm actually really happy because I love this one. I have watched many people stitch it and every time I see it, I just wanna drop everything I'm doing and start working on it. I love it. And that is the houses of Hawk Run Hollow. <laughs> I need like lightning, like. <laughs> so I will be working on this one starting January 1st of 2023. I am stitching it with Yvette. I think it's kind of become a tradition that Yvette and I do a new year, new start together. So this will be our third anniversary <laughs> and I'm really excited. So something we're gonna do a little bit different in our two previous new year, new starts, um, Yvette, has had went in and she had broken it up monthly so we had like we knew what we had to do every single month to try to get it done i don't know that we had done it on liberty's welcome but we definitely had like certain points we wanted to get to because we wanted to get it done with this one totally different this one is going to be a long slow project and if we get three blocks done by the end of the year that's great we just both really wanted to start this one and work on it and have it going. Um, again, we're not gonna, I, there, I, don't, I don't even think with everything that I have going on in my rotation this coming year, I don't think it would be possible to finish this by the end of the year. So I'm shooting for three blocks. If I can get three blocks done, happy camper. I'm just so happy to be doing it. <laughs> so, uh, the linen I will be stitching it on is a piece of 40 count heritage by picture this plus so it's got kind of a lit it's a um, very light like grayish green 
but I think it's going to be perfect. I do know that I'm going to do a bunch of substitutions. I mean, I'm using the DMC, but I am going to, much like I did with Autumn Hawkrun Hollow, I might be changing some of the house colors. But I think it's going to look good on that linen. I love it. And I think right now it's pretty true to what the linen is. So I'm really excited, really looking forward to that. I do have the DMC. I'm trying to decide if I should um, pull from my stash and leave these as backups because this is going to be in my rotation for a long time. And I worry about if I run out of a thread color in like a year, will it match? So I might just, and this is just for the first month. Um, I don't have, I mean, I have just been going month, I'm just going to go monthly and, you know, purchase the DMC unless I already have it. Eventually I'll get to a point where I have all the DMC. But what I decided to do is just kind of go month by month. Um, so that's kind of another reason why I'm thinking maybe I should just kit it up with um, this thread and, and instead of bobbinate it, which is what I normally do with DMC, I think I might just hang them from floss tags. So we'll see. I need to decide that because the first is literally in a couple days. <laughs> So really excited to begin working on that. I can't wait. I've been looking forward to it for months. <laughs> okay, another new start, which it's not technically a new start for me because I started it on Halloween, but I've been working on it off and on for the last two months in order to get it to the point it's at now. But basically it's my new morning stitch and it is Spooky Countdown by The Primitive Hair. <laughs> so I am doing this um, this uh, style here because uh, you can break up the days and do it like as an advent calendar but I'm doing all, mine on all one piece <laughs> and I am stitching this with Yvette so we will do a block a week for 31 weeks so that puts me at a finish the beginning of August and I was able to put the very last stitches in, I think yesterday morning, I think it was, but I've just kind of been working for like a little bit here and there on it. So I now have the top portion done and it's a tight fit, which we did know that. And Yvette had sent me a piece of um, 36 count jack-o-lantern. I want to say by also by X Jude or XJU Designs originally. So this is what it looked like and I was gonna stitch it on this side, but um, after talking with Yvette, um, I realized that it would look better on the back side. So that is how we're stitching ours. I didn't wanna have to deal with any sort of blending of anything. I just wanted everything that I stitched to show up. <laughs> so I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count jack-o-lantern by X Jude XJU Designs, and I'm stitching it with the called for it DMC. Again, it's gonna be a pretty tight fit, but I think it's gonna be okay. And when I get it done, I'm already thinking I might try to mount it to a piece of wood. So I need to spend the next 31 weeks finding the perfect piece of wood for it. <laughs> So that brings me to the plans for 2023 and just like every brand new year I get really excited for all of the fun projects that I am planning on doing both those that I know about and those that I will discover and do along the way. The first project that I really do want to try to strive and stitch this year is a stocking for myself. If you watched my last video, I talked a little bit about it. If you followed my journey for the last couple of years, you watched me stitch Brian's stocking and I kind of shared a little bit about what happened to my own that my grandma had made me. A lot of you guys are like, hey, you need to stitch your own stocking and it took me a little while to find it. I had some pretty strong criteria that I was wanting for myself. The first one, it needed to have a house or a church. And I also kind of wanted it to look like Brian and I would go back and forth between that and making mine look like a sampler. So that was kind of the biggest hurdle. And then finally, and I think it, it was meant to be because I kept seeing this particular stocking everywhere as like an advertisement for months. I finally, it was on sale and I thought it's time. And that is Silver Bells. 
by Stony Creek. So I will be stitching this stocking here. Uh, another thing that I liked about it was it kind of looked like Brian's a little bit in that it had, um, Bra uh, Brian's has some poinsettias down here and this one does as well. And then it does have the banner and his, his did as well. So I definitely wanted to, I wanted mine to kind of look a little bit like his because I realized that when the kids, you know, eventually leave home, it'll just be Brian and I. And so I want the two stockings to hang next to each other and kind of look like they match. <laughs> it also has a country church, which I loved. And my favorite Christmas movie is Silver Bells. And it was a Hallmark movie. It has Gary Sinise in it. I haven't seen it for several years, but it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. So just, it was, everything about it was meant to be. So I do plan to stitch it on the called for linen, which is a 28 count smoky white cashel. And I will stitch it with the called for DMC. And I do have some of the over dyed threads left over from Brian's stocking. It had for his stocking, it had me purchase a couple of different over dyed greens and I will be putting those in this stocking. So I'm looking forward to it. I can't, I'm looking forward to starting it. I know I, I was, I've known about this for a while. I think I've known about this since late spring that, you know, I found it and that I was going to work on it. I kind of can't wait to start working on it. I just need to find the right time. So an upcoming project for me is Florence Mary Dickinson by Hands Across the Sea. And this is what she looks like when I saw this sampler. I fell madly in love with it. I love everything about it and I'm really looking forward to beginning this. I think I will be I will begin it sometime this winter, I think. Um, but I love it. It's not very it's not huge, it's not bohemoth like some of the ones that I'm currently working on, but I just I really love it. And I think what I really love about it is this giant bouquet in the middle. So I'm looking forward to Starting it, I will be using the Vicki Clayton silk conversion, which I left them all. Um, I left them in here. I don't want any of them to get separated, but I can't wait to start using the Vicki Clayton silks. I love them. And then I chose a piece of 40 count sand as the linen to stitch her on. So looking forward to starting her very soon. So I know those two projects right there are ones that are like really high on the need to start soon list. Okay, so another one on the need to start soon list, which is in my really fashionable project bag, <laughs> is Old White Farmhouse Sampler by Stacy Nash. So this is one that I've really been wanting to begin working on. I've had this one kitted for uh, quite a while and it's one that I really would like to work on. I don't think it's too terribly big. Um, I just need to find a really good time to start it. And I have it kitted with the called for threads which they're um, just kind of all tangled <laughs> right now. But I have a piece of 40 count uh, confederate gray to stitch it on. So that is another one that is really high on the need to start list for this year. And I'm not going to go cuckoo crazy pants with all, uh, you know, like it's for me, it's really hard because everything I look at that I have kitted in my stash, I want to start right now, but I have to like slow myself down and just continue working on what I've got. But I know these are ones that I would really like to do this year. There's also a bunch of Halloween, and I mean, honestly, we could be here for 400 hours while I showed you all of those. <laughs> now, I mentioned a little bit earlier on that there was a New Year New Start that got bumped twice, and that is Sarah Stewart Hardman. She was bumped the first time um, so that I could stitch Christmas garden for my sister-in-law. And then we were supposed to start her January 1st this year, but with having Elizabeth Furness in our rotation, it just was too much. And I'll show Elizabeth uh, in my regular floss tube video in one week. 
but when Elizabeth is done, and I'm just putting it like it's happening, um, Sarah Stewart Hardman by uh, <laughs> Needlework Press. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little loopy right now. There's just like so much information that's come out of me that my brain is like, like <laughs> flatlining. Uh, but this is one that I have been wanting to stitch for a long time. My brother actually got me the chart for Christmas a couple of years ago. And after he got it for me, I slowly started kitting it up. So I would really, really like to work on this one as soon as Elizabeth is done. And so I really, she's my main focus piece. But again, I will show her in my next video in one week. <laughs> I need, I'm... I, you know, with doing these videos every two weeks, I need to like keep putting it out there that it's going to be in a week. I'm going to do a floss tube video in one week. <laughs> so come back in one week. <laughs> so I have it kitted up with all the threads in a very fashionable project bag. And I do have her kitted with a piece of 36 count vintage buttercream, which I found on, a, on sale at 123 Stitch, like a year or two ago for crazy cheap. It was like four bucks. Couldn't believe it. The exact size I needed. Okay, so I went out last night and there are three projects that I would like to at least stitch one. Not all three. I just want one of these in progress in 23 with a possible finish in their respective time frames. Again, just one. And I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'm sure gonna give it a try because I see these three in other stitchers' homes when they post them on social media, when they post them on floss tube, and I just really, 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 really want to have one of these done by the end of 23. Again, very fashionable project bag. <laughs> One of the possibilities is Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. Really love this one. And if this is the one that I choose, I'll be totally happy. I have it kitted with the called for threads. And I also have it kitted with a piece of 36 count hogs bristle by Fox and Rabbit. So that is possibility number one. I do have this one in a very beautiful project bag. <laughs> and that is the Noel sampler by with thy needle and thread. I love this one too. It's going to be really hard to choose which one. I do have it kitted with a piece of 36 count vintage cedar plank because I saw Carol Crago stitch hers uh, not last year, the year before maybe. And she had done it on the vintage cedar plank and it was gorgeous. And I immediately wanted to do mine just like hers. And I have it kitted with DMC, which I believe is the call for. So possibility number two. I should also tell you that um, I do have the like Yuletide, Gultide welcome fully kitted, but I stood out in the freezing dungeon for 20 minutes trying to decide which three to pull out. And these were the three. Um, the last possible one is Halloween at Hollyberry Farms. I love this one so very much. I love the flowers around the border. I love the big giant white house. I love all of it. And I really, really want to stitch this one so very badly. <laughs> I have it kitted with, I, which I have it kitted with what I believe is the called for, and that is 36 count 18th century rook, which I don't know if you can get this anymore. I haven't been able to see it because I would love to get some more of it. And then I do have the called for threads. Um, nicely wadded up. <laughs> and again, Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. Oh my gosh. So once again, I'm not saying I'm gonna stitch all three of them this coming year, I just want one. So if I can just find a way to work one of them into my rotation at some point in the coming year and possibly get it done, that would be amazing. But just one. <laughs> and again, I have Yuletide, Gultide, Summer at Hollyberry. Um, there's just so many. 
honest, I just wish that I could sit down and just only stitch for like the entire year and just do nothing but stitching, no eating, no having to go anywhere, no nothing, no laundry, no anything. Just sit and stitch for a year. <laughs> so many great projects that I want. So I just need to narrow it down between those three. I just want, I just want one of them in my rotation. Don't know when, don't know how, don't know when I, I just, I don't know yet. I don't want you guys to think I'm planning on doing all three um, because the only way I could possibly accomplish that is if I didn't have anything else in my rotation to stitch. So I just want one and I just have to decide which one. <laughs> well, my friends, that brings me to the end of today's video. And if you have stuck around for this length of time, thank you so very much. Again, I hoped you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, my plan is to be back in one week and I will have my regular floss tube update and I will share what I have been working on and I will have some progress on my new year, new start as well as spooky countdown. So I'm looking forward to that video. And then of course, after you know my next video, it'll go back into two weeks, but I just needed to kind of reset when they were coming out. Um, so I hope you will come back in a week and see what I have been working on. I will also talk about the quilts um, hopefully I will be able to locate and figure out when I worked on some of them and I will also have those to show in my next video as well. Um, if you'd like to see what I am up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts or I do have a Facebook page which is called Pumpkin Hollow Quiltings. Project bags will begin making their way back into the shop after the new year. I do apologize for the delay. The Christmas, the the week before Christmas and then this week has been kind of, um, there's been a lot going on and uh, my sewing machine's buried. I can't even get to it. So um, after the new year, um, Project Bags will begin making their way into the shop. And thank you so much for being patient with me. Um, I think that is about everything. I feel like there's one more thing. I'm not sure what it is, but if um, you're at all curious about any of the stuff I showed in today's video, I will list it all down below in the description box. And if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know down below and I will either answer them directly or in my next video, which will be in a week, or you can send me an email and all of that contact information will be listed down below also in the description box. Thank you so very much for stopping by today. I hope you have a very happy new year and I will see you all again very soon in a week. Bye-bye. <laughs>